holidays. Welcome to the Rignoski Recap. About the University of Toledo Rockets. Toledo taking on Wisconsin Milwaukee story. This one, Jessica Williams. She pulls up on the outside, nails it. Then the Rockets will go down low to Lucretia Smith. This team is so unselfish, folks. They are fun to watch. Get out and watch them if you haven't seen them yet. Later, but not much later, it's Jessica Williams again. Check out these numbers. 19 points, 5 dimes, and 5 boards for Williams. Rockets needed each and every one of them. They won a tight one today, 63-59. We'll pause for a break, but don't stray far. When we come back, we're going bowling with the Rockets. Mike O'Brien is in the house. Stay with us. Oh, the Bengals absolutely love the recap. Oh, goodness. All right, it's bowl season in college football. For the first time since 2005, the Toledo Rockets are, well, they're going bowling. They're going up to Detroit to play in what used to be the Motor City Bowl. It's now called the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. They'll play Florida International a week from tonight. They'll kick it off around 8.30. Plenty of tickets are still available. Tonight, University of Toledo Athletic Director Michael Bryan is in the house as we go one-on-one. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you, Joe. It's a, a huge week for the University of Toledo. Uh, uh, one week from tonight, you'll be in Detroit playing in the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. How are ticket sales and how are things going for the preps? Tickets have been steady, Joe. We, uh, you know, uh, our fans are kind of getting their groups together as to who's going with whom. We have alumni buses. Uh, we have, our, our, like, like I indicated, our ticket sales are going okay. Um, and we really want as many folks in midnight blue and gold as possible at, at Ford Field because uh, bowls are about ticket sales and, and how, how much you travel as far as your party and so uh, we think we're gonna have a very good crowd. Does the university have in, in place some packages and stuff? Well we have uh, alumni bus trips and buy your tickets through the through our ticket office mm -hmm. obviously and our website is utrockets.com or uh, the phone number is 419 Five three zero gold mm -hmm. as far as our ticket office and so there's all kinds of opportunities we have a fifteen dollar student ticket we also have a ten dollar student ticket if they take the bus and so at eight thirty with a game at eight thirty it a, gets a little bit late that's the way to go now that's going to be a lot of fun let's talk about the football season boy Tim Beckman did a whale of a job you start out with a tough loss to Arizona right. people go oh my goodness this this whole stretch with Boise State in there and Purdue in there why all you go oh man this could be a long year and, and he really got it together what a fine year for UT football well Tim did a great job in the staff and, and you, you talk about Joe the non-conference schedule which was difficult mm -hmm. but we also had our first two Mac games on the road in that three-game road swing, um, winning at Ohio, winning at Western, and then beating Purdue there, that was huge. Because there was, there was some talk that, you know, there's the possibility we could be 0-6. Well, to those people, I would say, they haven't been around Tim Beckman in our football program. And uh, Tim, Tim did a great job. Scheduling philosophy. How, I mean, how do you do that? You, you've got the Miami Hurricanes coming in. Right. Uh, Missouri's going to play here in a few right. years. You've got, uh, you've had all kinds of teams. How do you go about scheduling? You don't want to make it too hard, but at the same time, I guess you want to challenge and, and, and give the opportunity for the kids to play against big time opponents like Ohio State, and Michigan, right. and Missouri, right. and Miami. Right. Joe, when we when we have the opportunity to get. Uh, an ACC team mm -hmm. such as Miami, who's won national championships, and, and Missouri, and, and uh, we, you, you, you name it, we've had them here, and we will continue to do that. I think it's a great opportunity, Coach Beckman agrees, that when we're in the living room of recruits, we can say, hey, by the way, while you're at Toledo, you're going to be playing Miami at our place, Missouri at our place, Navy at our place. And so I think that's really a good thing. And I think it's just positive. I think it's good for the league. Uh, and we'll see what we can do to continue to try to do that. Oh, Eric Page, uh, a local right. product, got named to the Walter Camp All-American. This is unprecedented in, in Toledo history as a sophomore. Your thoughts on Mr. Page? Well, the best thing about uh, Eric is that he is a sophomore. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, he's not a freshman, we, but uh, Eric has two years left. And what a wonderful story that is, Joe, that local and, and stayed home. And clearly, when you go to the University of Toledo, you can be recognized. And uh, and so we, we get these we get these verbal commits from the local folks and and Eric doing what he's doing uh, on and off the field is just a great story. Yeah, it really is. It's neat to keep those local kids right. home. You look at the Mid American Conference. So much has been made uh, throughout the country with expansion and and there's been mention in the last few weeks about possibly reaching out to UMass. Well, what are your thoughts about expansion in, in the in the MAC? 
Well, I think, uh, you know, it's something that we've been talking about as a league for, for a number of months, even prior to the summer. And in this day and age, Joe, you just don't know what's going to happen to maybe some current institutions at the same time. You have to be, you have to be ready. Uh, you know, Temple is, is, is a part of the league for football only, and, and uh, it's out there about UMass, and see, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, uh, what the MAC is attempting to do really is to get to an even number for a football schedule. Would you ever think about leaving the MAC, UT leaving the MAC? You know, it'd be totally dependent upon who makes the phone call. We will answer the phone call, to be very honest, uh, and do what's best for the institution. But uh, we'll see. I want to talk on basketball a little bit. Right. Uh, Coach Kowalski got his first win in overtime against Valpo. That was a pretty good win. I mean, no. that was one of those games you look at, oh, that's going to be tough. And, boy, that was a good first win. It really was. Uh, Valpo's in the Horizon League where Todd was. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're a good team. They're going to win some games. And so, of all people that we get our first win against, that was a good team. And the women against Indiana coming back from 13 down. Trisha Kalp, and you and I talked about this in the commercial break. She likes the tough early season schedules. There's no question about it. She, Trisha thinks, and what a job she's done oh, for two plus years. She thinks that that's only going to help us get better for the max schedule. And so I agree with that philosophy. And, and we could kind of revert and say the same thing uh, in football. Maybe that schedule got us prepared for the MAC uh, and our 7 and 1 record in football, too. We're ready to go, and uh, let's fill up Ford Field. Go Rockets. Florida Thanks, International is going to be fun. Great. Thank you, Joe. We need to take another break. When we come back, it's time to search for the perfect Christmas tree. All I want for Christmas, Santa, is a new football and a Christmas tree. Can you help me out? Well, Joey's been a good year so far. It just might get a little bit better. Oh! Stay with us. Yeah, it's been a while since I've really been able to get home and relax and not think about football for a few days. So I'm looking forward to getting home, seeing the family, and uh, just relaxing for the most part and just catching up with friends. All right, that's good stuff. Jordan Kovacs is coming home for the holidays. Kovacs and his Wolverine teammates worked out indoors yesterday preparing for their January 1st matchup with Mississippi State in the Gator Bowl. In less than a week, in less than a week, millions of people throughout the country will be celebrating Christmas. And even though the holiday is fast approaching, there's still some time to get a tree or even cut one down, which leads us to this week's Box Challenge. Now that's a big tree. What do we have here, Duke? That's a Douglas fir tree. That's about 10 years old. Uh, it's a beautiful tree. This is a pretty wide tree. For Duke Wheeler, Christmas is a special time of year. What I like about Christmas itself is just the, the ability to share time and love with family and friends. And much of that sharing starts right here at the White House Christmas Tree Farm. Well, we spend a lot of time with these trees and we get to know a lot of families uh, that come out year after year. Here, there are plenty to choose. We have about 70 to 80,000 trees, and uh, each year we have so much fun, we plant about 5,000 trees. You're kidding. You have 70 or 80,000 Christmas trees? That's correct, from 12 inches to 40 feet tall. Most are tailor-made for each family to enjoy the season. This tree is going to be short, and this will be about a three-foot tree by the time we fix it up. It'll be a tabletop special. Bigger is not better this year. People are just coming for the experience. Uh, the smallest tree we've sold is about 12 inches. Hey, Joe, do you think you can cut your own Christmas tree down? Take the fox challenge. It's nice because we have a little snow on the ground. Well, the snow this past weekend was nice, and we're looking forward to an exciting final weekend uh, because of the snow. There's nothing better than walking a farm, picking out a tree in the snow. It is absolutely beautiful out here, so let's get to work. This is a con color fir. This is a... A fir tree that has a smell like a citrus. Ah, yes. Yeah. The perfect prize. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of work. I got the perfect solution for this problem. There, ah, oh, there she is. My old Christmas tree. Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll step aside, but after the break, it's a buzzer beater like no other. They're celebrating at Southview. I'll tell you why next. 
Welcome back. If you like holiday hoops, it's a great time of year, from the high schools to the junior colleges to the colleges. I said hoops, not footballs, pots. Come on. We've got buzzer beaters and fantastic finishes. And upon further review... We start the week with City League Basketball. Central Catholic host of St. Ursula. Get out your fire hats. The Sullivan Center is an inferno. Irish dialing long distance at Sydney Delft for three. Arrow strike back. Isabel Lashewski. Nice strong move the hole. She gets the kind roll. And how about this highlight? Maddie Straw behind the back. Then the no-look pass to Kelly Shoemaker. Are you kidding me? But the Irish are tough at home. It's the inferno. Remember, Sydney Schaefer with the bucket. Central Catholic wins 51-41. On Tuesday, high school basketball, Southview taking on Springfield. Devils in command, Chester McFadden, the three ball, he had 16. Devils go up 15, but the Cougars storm back. Just over two minutes to play, Brandon Sinram, three, Southview within three. After free throws cut the lead to one, Springfield's Leroy Alexander misses a one and one with 19 seconds left. Down one, last chance for Southview. Allen Gant just before the buzzer, yes! And Southview wins at the horn, 61-59. And on Wednesday, Toledo Walleye hockey players spreading holiday cheer at Toledo Children's Hospital. Several players read Christmas stories and delivered presents to the kids. They even played some games and signed some autographs. Now that is a neat deal. And on Thursday, the University of Toledo announced the new members of the Varsity T Hall of Fame. Among those to be inducted this winter, Lance Moore. Lance only started two years at Toledo, but over that time he broke just about every major rocket receiving record. He was one of seven chosen to be part of 2011's class for the Varsity T Hall of Fame. The actual induction ceremony is taking place in mid-February. And on Friday, high school basketball, they have the holiday spirit over at Central Catholic. Irish shows in the Whitmer Panthers. Panthers off to a good start. That's Mike Zemanski, strong to the hole, the reverse layup. Later, Whitmer playing strong D. Nigel Hayes, the rejection. Whitmer at one point would go on a 17-2 run and win it 48-40. And on Saturday, UT Rocket basketball looking for its second win of the year. Take it on Florida Gulf Coast, and it's the holiday season as in Reese Holiday. He had 11 points and 13 boards. Later, more rocket offense. It's Malcolm Griffin for three. Then Griffin again loading up from downtown. Rockets shoot down the Eagles. 75-63. Toledo has now won two in a row. And that's upon further review. We'll step aside for a final time. It's a fantastic finish and a great return. Rignowski moves right. He moves left. Ah! Stay with us.